after the prayer of the faithful is the transition into the liturgy of the Eucharist, right? And so for the liturgy of the Eucharist, it starts off with the preparation of the gifts. I have to tell you a funny story about the our 730 Mass. I am not a big fan of quiet Masses. You know what that is? You guys are sometimes called golf masses or whatever it is. Because they want to be out quick, right? So it's like 7.30 is the earliest morning. They want to be in and out on a Sunday, God bless them, for like a half hour. You know, and it's just not going to happen. Uh, but nevertheless, and so part of the reason why the, the where quiet masses come from is they take all the music out. So it's quicker. Uh, that's the only reason. <laughs> they take it out because it's quicker. It's sad. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we have one of these quiet masses over at St. Paul's. When I first started there, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to show them. And so what I'll do is I will not do the prayers sub voce out loud, which there are prayers during the preparation of the gifts where we say, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You know that one where we hold up the bread and everyone says, blessed be God. Um, and then there's the same prayer, uh, blessed are you, Lord God, for this wine and blessed be God. You know, and then there's the, the washing the hands. People say that out loud, all those kind of things. I was totally silent. And actually, in the general instruction of the Roman Missal, it says sub voce, which means the priest is not supposed to say that out loud. Mainly because the envisionment of the church is that there's music being played right now. Uh, there's some type of, of hymn being sung during the preparation of the gifts. But when there's not, you're not supposed to say those. You're not supposed to say those prayers necessarily out loud. Uh, but and so I didn't. But you know what happens then? The preparation of the gifts becomes a long moment of silence. They're taking up a collection. People are listening for the coins. They hit the thing. And they're doing all kinds of things. They're desperately trying to fill that silence because I'm not filling it anymore. And all of a sudden, I did that for about two weeks, and people were begging me to add some music. They came up and they said, uh, Father Matt, can you, uh, you know, I'll pay for a musician to come in and just, I don't want to sing any songs, I don't want to sing any songs, but just to play some, some instrumental music, some piano, do anything during that time of the preparation of the gifts. Um, I've stopped doing it because it is even more silence than I'm comfortable with. Uh, and I have not yet taken up on the... Uh, on their offer yet, but we will uh, during the, uh, this coming Advent. Uh, we've got some plans in the works to be able to make it at least not a quiet Mass, to have some type of music, some type of singing, um, which of course, like the Alleluia, you always have, you, should, you always do that during a Sunday, um, and uh, things like that. But so the, the preparation of the gifts uh, is, a, is a moment, if you don't have music, to be very, very silent and to prepare for the awesome thing that's happening next, which of course is the Eucharistic prayer. And then after the Eucharistic prayer, we receive Holy Communion. What happens after we receive Holy Communion in the Mass? Silence and music. Those two things that demons hate the most, silence and music, are given to us as we become as close to humanly possible in this world to, re to being with Christ himself. It is an awesome, awesome moment. It is so... What a waste of a moment if we don't... Uh, sing or be silent and pray in that moment. If we get distracted and we kind of start reading some text or whatever it might be that we got in, you know, during the Mass or, or we kind of just flip through the hymnal or we you know, do some, some other thing, we've just received the Lord in the Eucharist and silence and music so appropriately follow that wonderful and profound moment. I always recommend, and not just saying it because of the visitation, but a Hail Mary is a great little prayer to say after receiving communion. I don't think we ever come closer to being like Mary and in in, in making Christ really present inside of us so that we can give him to others than at that beautiful moment of receiving Holy Communion. So silence and music appropriately follow the prayer after communion. And unfortunately, what happens immediately after that? Announcements. And maybe a second collection. It's sad. I don't know how to fix it. I hope that you guys can help me fix that here uh, tonight, maybe. But uh, So the prayer after communion, silence, music, and then um, we go on to other things that can take us away from that. But uh, nevertheless, that's just the nature of parish masses right now, I guess. But then, then we come into after mass, right? And so after mass, there is again music and silence. We have received the Lord, and there are a lot of people that want to extend their period of thanksgiving. Because it's another and very important thing after receiving communion is to give God thanks for the precious and awesome, fantastic gift that he has just given you. And so we want, some people want to say, I really want to take this moment to give God thanks. And it's hard to do sometimes when people get up and they're, again, kind of carrying on conversations before they get out of church. Um, and so that's why it's really important to try to keep 
silence in the sacred space of the church in, in honor of the Eucharist, in honor of those who are trying to be uh, living and, and doing extra Thanksgiving prayers after receiving Holy Communion. So that's really an important thing to do as well. Um, and try to remember that so that when you leave church, you know, wait to the conversation until at least you're kind of walking out the door, not when you're kind of in the pew there, because you never know who's in front or behind you that might be trying to give a, a special little extra Thanksgiving um, to God. Um, and uh, and so that's that's a really important part. So there, those are some ways in which silence plays an integral and very important role um, in in the mass. And uh, I just wanted to um, to maybe end here real quickly with a, a reflection on uh, the visitation. You know, maybe we can close then with a with a hail mary, and then uh, Be uh, <laughs> Becky Peggy's got a couple announcements uh, to make about awesome things next week. Uh, and then uh, well, I can take any questions you guys might have. So, uh, you know, we celebrate the visitation, which of course is Mary's visit to Elizabeth after she has found out that she has the Word of God living within her. Jesus is present in her uh, as an unborn child. And she comes to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth hears her greeting, and the infant leaped in her womb. The infant leaped in Elizabeth's womb. That's, of course, John the Baptist saying, Yippee! God is here! You know, God is here because of this amazing exchange of the greeting from Mary and the invisible reality of Christ present inside of Mary that she is able to hear, Elizabeth is able to hear because, and John the Baptist is able to hear uh, because of this interior kind of silence that we all want to try to establish and, and, and keep going. We don't want to be so distracted the noise that the greetings of our brothers and sisters here, the greetings between you, uh, each other, are greetings really to announce that the Lord is present because the Lord is present in each and every one of us, right? And so when we hear each other's greeting, if we're, if we're just kind of distracted and not able to really hear what's really happening there, the true reality is this the voice of someone who is the presence of God in them, that the Holy Spirit, there's a temple of the Holy Spirit that is dwelling in them, and they are saying hi to me, and that I can recognize the presence of Christ in them. But we can only do that, I think, if we have this, this kind of interior silence inside of us that is able to see the things that are invisible around us, that to see the reality that is true, and not just the reality that is forced and presented upon us by, uh, by this passing world desperate in its attempt to hang on to some type of, 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 of meaning and control when it really has no control at all. Because noise is just a passing bang, flash, boom, and it's over. And what is left is silence and music. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Happen for you. Thank you, Father. Um, just a quick note. For, well, one, another thing that Mother Teresa would always say about silence is that in the silence of the heart, God speaks and we listen. So one of the things we'll be going into next week with Father Phil Hurley, his Jesuit priest, he'll be coming down to speak to us. And he'll be talking about the ways God speaks to each of us and his will for, our, for each of us and ways to discern that using the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. So if, and that will also be the last talk for the series. So if any of you know somebody who's been meaning to come, wanted to come, hasn't yet gotten around to it, this next talk on June 7th will be the last one for the summer. So I encourage them to come on out and listen to Father Phil. He'll also be giving a retreat later in the summer at oh, well, Our Lady of Petrol Help, and this will be a lead into that. So and again, thank you to Father Matt. If you have any questions. Thank you, Peggy, for organizing, getting all this stuff together. Do not miss next week. Phil Hurley is a fantastic priest, and he is like a professional speaker, unlike me blabbing around here. Uh, he is excellent. He is fantastic. He goes all over the place talking about this very special topic that he is uh, he's going to be speaking about. And also, he's basically founded a group called Hearts on Fire, right? And uh, it's a group of young adults whose hearts are on fire with Christ, 
And this retreat that Peggy mentioned, and he'll talk a lot about it, I don't actually know the details right now, but we're going to be really pro promoting it at St. Paul's and Resurrection and OLPH and all around the Howard County, Catonsville area. It's going to be at Our Lady Perpetual Help, and it's really going to help your hearts uh, be on fire and continue to burn uh, for Christ, or maybe catch some people on fire too that might not be on fire yet. Uh, so, uh, so please, please, please come next week, and then uh, keep your ears and eyes open for uh, the Hearts on Fire retreat that is going to be over at Our, Our Lady Perpetual Help. So, great. Any uh, questions, comments, uh, things you guys might want to? Go ahead. of silence and stuff because um, I'm in the process of conversion and I went to I've been going to, I've gone to a Presbyterian church my entire life and it always confused me that we would talk so much before we go to church and then there'd be this huge social thing afterwards everyone would talk and stuff and I just felt like there was never any time to like prepare for worship or even to like think about afterwards because immediately after just talk about everyone else's lives and how they're doing and getting caught up with them. And then at the same time, I, I when I went to mass this past Sunday, I was sitting there. It was kind of weird to me that like no one kind of like talks in the pews. So, but like now, like it was it was really interesting to hear. But, but like I, can... that, it, I like the idea of sitting there in silence and preparing yourself for worship. Because my dad actually would say that in the car a lot, but then it also confused me because when we get there and everyone would be talking to, to each other, so it kind of ruined that preparation. So that's good. Thank you. And, and... Wow, that's awesome news. I hope that's fantastic. We'll keep you in our, our prayers on your journey. That's beautiful. Um, but it can be jarring. You know, there's a, the sometimes Catholic Mass or just, you know, places where you go into and there's you're used to worship being a lot of talk and a lot of mute, a lot of noise, not noise, but a lot of us doing things and not a lot of allowing God to do things in us, um, which is, I think, really a one of the key parts of the of the Catholic Mass, as you'll find out. So, um, so that's that's really cool. And the other neat thing too, I mean, this is not to say that we are not going to uh, certainly want to, you know, keep up and find out what's going on in people's lives. But I think it actually becomes a little bit more deeper, a little more profound. You know, we get ourselves in trouble all the time. You know, insert foot into mouth, you know, when we just kind of talk, 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 and, and we don't give ourselves a break to actually pray and sit down and think and, and kind of sometimes allow our emotions to run their cycles, you know, so we're really upset at someone, for example. Um, if we don't have an opportunity of silence to kind of just, you know, let it simmer down, you know, lay, wait a while, and then speak, uh, we, we often get ourselves in a lot of trouble. Bill was telling me a story just the other day about when he used to yell at his soldier, or he was in the retired Navy, and he, when he got really upset, he would always wait a day before he calls them into their office, and then he would curse at them and yell all this stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but at least he waited a day. Could you imagine what it, if he would have done it right away? It would have been like, it would have been nasty. So, uh, no, but that's a, so there's a lot of good things in what you just said. That's, that's really awesome. And I'm just so happy for you, too. Just a comment from, I went on a retreat over the weekend, and of course one of the, discuss, one of the topics of the retreat was silence, <laughs> listening to God in silence, but one of the things that occurred to me, you're talking about our interior silence lets, lets us receive God, lets us hear Him. I was just thinking like Mary's perfect silence, her perfect interior silence, which allowed, what allowed her to receive the perfect Word of God. Wow. So like, I don't know, I'm not... That's awesome. Did you guys get that? It was uh, no comment needed. That was fantastic. But Mary's per if we are when we're silent, we're able to see and hear God present, right? Are we able to receive Him? Um, but if our silence was perfect, like Mary's was, then we could perfectly receive Christ. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Perfect thing for visitation too. Yeah. Oh, there's a question back here. Yeah. Um, comment, but sometimes 